it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's Roundtable podcast, we have, and he doesn't show up a lot, but when he does show up, it's like, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland hey, Aaron, hey. how are you? Doing great. Doing so glad great. To, uh, to have you on the Roundtable. Um, we also have you know, with a, with a new beautiful haircut. Tate, big Papa Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Doing well. Just uh, enjoying the holiday season. Now, did you get the haircut because Daisy, your little baby, was like trying to grab it? Yeah, I was just trying to match her. She's bald, so I figured, you know, cut some hair off, make her feel, feel like dad. Nice, nice. She's got, she's, she's got the Scott Todd look going. Yeah, it's a good look, though. It's a good look. The Bearland Aaron look. Also um, good. Yeah, and speaking of Scott Todd from landmoto.com and uh, also postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, are we ready for the podcast? Are we, are, we, are we ready for the roundtable? Yeah, let's go. All right, just remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it way to get money. Don't send out statements. Don't get on the phone. Hey, you're, you know, your credit card bounce. It's all automated. If the ACH fails, it'll charge the credit card on file. It is a sure, assuring way to get paid. Your borrowers will love it. You'll love it. Bearline Aaron, do you love Geekpay? I love Geekpay. See, it's amazing and it works. And the pricing is irresistible. In fact, uh, if you do it the right way, you charge a note setup fee and a monthly collection fee. GeekPay is the only software that I know of that actually is a profit center. It actually makes you money. So check it out, geekpay.io. Uh, get your first note for free at thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay. So Tate, let's start the round table with a story. What's, what's the story you want to tell? So I had a pretty unusual and exciting uh, experience recently uh, that resulted in a nice payday for me. So I purchased a property several, several years ago, four or five years ago, and I kind of forgot about it. And once you own a lot of properties, you know what I mean? You can just, they sometimes just kind of get lost. And, and I got a tax bill, bill for it this year. And I thought, ah, I don't know. I only paid 50 bucks for the land. It's got like $1,200 in back taxes owed on it. It's worth, you know, tax-free, maybe $2,000. Uh, I got I to gotta get around to it, but it wasn't a priority, right? And uh, I just kind of let it, that, let it sit, and I was going to get to it and figure out what to do with it at some point. And I got a random message on Facebook the other day. And it's kind of interesting because when we go to sell land, what are the things that we always do? What are the approaches? We always contact the neighbors. Well, I did that and I got no response. It was crickets. Well, four or five years later, I get a random person requesting to be my friend on Facebook and I accepted thinking that they were, you know, an, a member of the community. And then they sent me over a message that said, Hey, Mr. Litchfield, are you the same person that owns X property and X location? And I thought, uh, I think so. Maybe let me check. So I pulled it up and sure enough, it was that lot that I'd completely forgotten about. I said, yeah, I am. And the person said to me, Hey, are you interested in selling it? And I responded, I said, everything I have is for sale. She said, great. Um, what are you looking for? I said, well, make me an offer. It's got a lot of back taxes owed on it. And she said, well, I noticed that there's $1,200 back taxes owed. I said, yeah. She goes, would you take $1,500 cash for it today? And I said, uh, yeah, no problem. Sent them a link via geek pay. Boom. Payment received. I made 1500 bucks, recorded a deed. I didn't even market the property mark. She came to me. It was, I mean, I've never had that happen before. It was so awesome. That's insane. Wait, so you had no cost basis on this land. I was into it for $50. Didn't pay the back taxes. And wow. she just sent me the money over. It was, it was the craziest thing. And it got me thinking like, you know, the market is that strong that people are seeking us out to buy our properties. 
Wow. Scott Todd, does this story make you a little nervous? No, I've had, I've had deals like it too. So it doesn't make me nervous. Uh, you know, I've had deals. I mean, I don't forget about my properties tape because I, I use uh, LG pass to manage them. However, however, I did have a property where um, I bought it knowing that there was like twenty twenty seven hundred dollars in taxes. I think it's twenty seven or twenty eight hundred, and I paid the the seller a hundred dollars for the property, and then I didn't I didn't pay the taxes, and then we sold the we sold the property for cash for sixty five or I think sixty five hundred. So, you know, I'm into this deal for a hundred dollars. I get $6,500 cash. I then take the, the seller's cash and pay off the $2,700 in taxes. So, you know, you take the 6,500 less the 2,700, you know, my profit on that, that property was $3,800 from a hundred dollar investment. I mean, that's insane, right? It's insane. That's insane. Bearland Aaron, does this stuff make you nervous? Not at all. It makes me hopeful. Because like Tate, Tate said, hopefully the market is that super strong that, man, there's, there's sales for all of us then. Well, I mean, there definitely are. But I mean, I always get a little nervous when things are too easy, right? Then I start thinking, well, this is not sustainable. Like, that's just not the way life works. It can't be that easy. Maybe we're in a bubble um, and we don't know it. And I'm always thinking to myself, uh, you know, especially living through 2010, like I did when, when things did go down, uh, you know, a market doesn't just keep going up and up and up. The economy is super strong right now. When is it going to dip? You know, the things like Bitcoin make me nervous and I start getting, you know, super, super conservative. Am I making a mistake? Scott Todd. Am I thinking about this incorrectly? Wait, Scott, you're on mute. Am I back? Yeah. Sorry. I'm not, I don't think you're thinking about it incorrectly. I think that, I think that um, there's, there's always bubbles, but at the same time, there's, there's always markets. There's always market for, uh, market for something. Right, right. Tate Litchfield, am I being overly pessimistic when things are so good? No, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this is truth is, Mark, we're in the business of selling land. So, I mean, that's, that's what we do. When the market's great, that's what we're going to do. And when the market's bad, that's what we're still going to do, right? Like Scott said, the appetite for land in this country is just outrageous. So, we're going to sell land no matter what the economy states. You know, we might have to adjust our pricing, but I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. That is true. That is true. And I, and I remember in 2010, I had a bunch of defaults. I just resold the property. I just had to price it differently. The company was still profitable. I just had to pare down my lifestyle a bit. So maybe I'm nervous about, well, maybe, uh, you know, in a few years, I won't be able to go on a, you know, a $50,000 ski trip like Scott Todd likes to take his family. Oh, <laughs> please. You know. $50,000 ski trip. I, 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 I wouldn't enjoy yeah. it. There's you no know, he, way. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy a $50,000 ski trip. Are you um, kidding me? It's cold. No, it's thank cold. you. Well, first of all, it is cold. I, you're not going to find me in any place it's cold. Uh, second, $50,000 for like a ski trip's not happening. All right. All right. Bearland, Aaron, you're not, uh, you're not nervous. I'm not thinking about this the wrong way. No, I don't think you're thinking about it the wrong way. Um, but you just, you have to, you, you have to react to what's in front of you. Um, at the moment because we can't predict the future. Uh, you know, like several years ago, I sold a bunch of stocks because I thought, hey, you know what? The market can't go higher than than 20,000, right? It's 24 something today. So, you know, had I been, you know, I just reacted to what I thought at the time and it all turned out okay, you know, um, and this will too. And if it is a bubble and it bursts, you know, then there's a buying opportunity. Um, that, is that sort of thing. So, I mean, the people, you know, look, look at the people who know what they're doing in, in, in various investments, they make money on both sides. And uh, that's, we're supposed to be experts in this category. So we should be able to make money on both sides, no matter what's going on. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, when you, when we're in the business of buying assets, 23 cents in the dollar, 
we're, we're going to be just fine if we, as long as we keep that discipline. And I, and I know that we don't overpay, right? So as the market heats up, maybe we'll just adjust. And uh, as it comes down, we'll just adjust for that. And, you know, there's, there's always that part of the market where it's easier to buy and harder to sell. And there's always, you know, it's harder to buy and easier to sell depending on where we are with our micro and macro economic conditions. I think right now we're living in really good equilibrium. Uh, I want to ask you guys about that. Like, are you finding it harder for deal flow? And are you finding it, you know, like, what do you think about the market as of right now? Bearline Aaron, harder to buy or harder to sell? Right now for me, uh, for Bearland family, it's a little bit harder to sell um, and easier to buy. It could be the markets that we're in right now. Um, okay. You know, it's it, it's hard to say. We're gonna we're testing some new areas. We're gonna find out whether that's the case or something else. But you know, okay, Tate. You know, I think it's it's split pretty evenly for us. We're buying what we're selling. You know, we're selling what we're buying, and we're buying a lot. Yeah, it's not. We're not having have an issue with deal flow or selling. How about you, you know, Scott? Todd? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, for, for us, it's, it's balanced as well, you know? And I mean, I really haven't seen um, our pricing change either, you know, like in terms of up or down, I think that I've still been buying some of these things for the same price as I have for a long time. Yeah. Tate, what about you? Yeah. I mean, certain areas, I think see a little bit more competition at times, but there's always deals out there. There's always property. There's always stuff to acquire. And maybe that means trying a new, trying a new area or bumping up your prices five, ten percent. But I mean, in all reality, if if I am paying more for property, it's it's not like it's double or anything. We're talking minimal amounts of of offer amount increases. It's honestly insignificant. So what I raise it a hundred bucks, you know, my offer is a hundred dollars and now I'm paying five hundred instead of 400 it you know it's not that big of a deal honestly right right beerland aaron any thoughts no like tate said um you know just you can move some prices around a little bit um but it it's not super significant considering the the margins that we're we're talking about you know right right so let's uh let's shift gears here and let's talk about sustainable growth. One of the things that we see in one-on-one coaching, flight school, are the, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, irrationally exuberant newbie. And what they want to do is they want to grow and they want to grow super fast. And what happens, uh, Tate, when that happens? You know, I think we need to dive into what this means, first of all, a little bit further. This is Sure, not sure. I want to mail every single day. These are the people that come out and say, you know what? I'm going to mail 2000 offers this month and I'm going to buy anything that comes across my table and I'm going to hire 50 VAs. You know, if you do that, you're almost setting yourself up for a bottleneck and not even failure, right? Cause you can recover from all of this. It's just, you set yourself up for a lot of headache and a lot of stress, right? The kind of stress that's like, Oh, I've got 20 accepted offers and I'm still perfecting the due diligence part of the business. How am I ever going to get through these? Oh, I got to renegotiate all these deals. I don't even, I'm nervous about even answering the phone right now. Right? So sustainable growth is, I mean, it's huge, right? Yeah. Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts on that? Um, okay. So when, when I see somebody that comes out and they're like all the chips are on the table before they've even done like, I don't know, just a, even a couple of deals, like they're just going all in. I'm going to mail a thousand offers my first month. I'm going to, I'm going to try to fast forward this. I'm going to do all this stuff. I agree with Tate. It's, it's a train wreck waiting to happen. Like you can, you can say like, here's the train wreck coming. Here's the next train wreck. And it's not because it's not because the system doesn't work. What happens is you don't have a foundation of what success even looks like. You, you haven't done a deal yet. You have got to own land. I just mean that you've got to buy all this land, now you're in a grab for it and then you tend to overpay because you're not entering this thing incorrectly. You know, you're not making your entry correctly. So now you're overpaying and then all of a sudden 
you've got this snowball that's just going to chase you down the hill. And it, it, I think it leads to burnout. I think it leads to rapid burnout because you're not seeing the success that you want um, at the right time, as opposed to, okay, look, like, you know, let me just start doing some deals. Let me start mailing a uh, hundred a week. That's going to give me about a deal a week. Let me get my sales systems down. Let me build these systems. And then once you get those systems in place, then scale. But a lot of times people want to scale like from day one. And that's bad. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, it can be really painful. There's, there's a reason we say in one of our modules in the Investor's Toolkit, it's more deals than you can handle. It literally is more deals than you can handle in the beginning. Uh, until you get your systems up and running. Uh, Bearland, Aaron, did you have any, does any of this ring uh, <laughs> true for you? Yeah, I don't know if you remember that, but uh, yeah, when we first started, it, and the thing is, we didn't start off putting out a thousand or 2000 offers. I mean, we started off, I mean, you know, we were in coaching, so, you know, and Scott was our coach. He kind of set us off on the right track and we were doing like, you know, 20 mailings a day, you know, a hundred a week. And uh, we hit this pocket, this area that everybody wanted to sell. And we still ended up so overwhelmed with the, the response that, I mean, it, you know, for, for a time it kind of buried us, you know, and I probably lost a couple deals because of it. Um, I probably bought a couple things that I maybe shouldn't have because of it. Um, nothing that was catastrophic, you know, but um, but yeah, and that was doing it, you know, at a pace. So, you know, you go out and you start doing some of these things that are, you know, you just think you got to do everything today. And I mean, you know, I guess, like Scott said, rapid burnout could be a, a thing. Um, just the total, total overwhelmingness of everything um, with the rest of life going on at the same time, um, especially if it's a side hustle for you to, you know, to while you're still working your nine to five man, it, it just may be to the point where you lose out on the ability to do something really great in your life because you got so overwhelmed and you shelf it, you know, and that's, we don't want anybody to have that happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it kind of reminds me of that Tony Robbins quote, we underestimate what we can, or no, we overestimate what we can do in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in five years. Tate, what are we going to say? Well, I was just going to, you know, something similar to that. It's, you know, how do we, when people get started in this business, how do they measure their success, right? They measure it by the amount of money that they make or the deals that they do. And sometimes I think we're measuring with the wrong size of a yardstick, right? Like maybe we need to measure our, our success on, on a more realistic basis, right? Oh, my 20 offers went out today. I contacted these five individuals. I posted X number of ads, right? Maybe we need to bring it back down to a manageable scale and, if we do that, we'll see, uh, you know, we'll start to feel like we're moving the needle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts? 20 a day, baby. I think that uh, if you're going to start, you start off with 20, 20 offer letters a day. I don't care if you want to do, you know, a hundred on a Monday. I prefer you not. I'd prefer you do 20 a day, but 20 a day keeps the bat away. Like they like to say in flight school, right? Like literally just that 20 a day just gets the momentum going. Once you perfect it, then go full steam. You know, it's so funny because I actually take that 20 day philosophy and it, it actually uh, ripples out for every area of my life, including with my kids. So I'll tell them, Hey, look, look we got to clean up on Sunday. Right. And I'll set the timer. We're really going to do this for five minutes. After five minutes, we're done cleaning. Okay. Inevitably they get in the rhythm of it and they'll go for like 15 minutes and everything's done. And I don't have to like hassle. Hey, you know, Noah, take the trash out. Like here we did it because he's kind of gotten the, in the mindset of cleaning, right? It's always the hardest thing to start. When I work out in the morning, I, I'll, I'll do like the seven minute workout if I don't feel like doing it. And then, Oh, I, I'll do another set of seven minutes. So then it's 14 minutes, but I'm breaking it down. I'm breaking this, this thing down. That's big into the small chunk. And I, I really think it's like, it was just this, it, it was so brilliant of, of Scott to like take that uh, philosophy of taking this big piece that's overwhelming in the beginning and just making it really manageable. I mean, how long does it take 
to send out 20 offers. I mean, I could hand write 20 offers in 20 minutes. I mean, Scott, how long did it take in the beginning? Less than an hour? Uh, yeah, it took, I mean, it took less than an hour to like handwrite 20 offer letters. I mean, that, uh, and look, we don't handwrite them. I don't handwrite them today, but in the beginning I right. did. Right. And, um, I mean, I would sit there on a conference call, you know, like, and I would just write, I would go to lunch and I'd sit, you know, at, at lunch outside, probably at Panera Bread, Mark, but you know, I don't know, something like that, but I'm I was sure it was Panera Bread. I'd sit there and I'd handwrite the things and, and like, it looked like I was just sending, you know, I don't know birthday cards or, you know, letters. I don't, I don't know. And it was kind of like therapeutic as well. Like to just handwrite 20, it sucked. So I don't do it now. But at the beginning it was like, uh, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it? And then you see the name come back and you're like, oh, I wrote them a letter. It's yeah. It's like funny. little, little lottery tickets. Yeah. You don't know which one. You don't know what's going to come back. Barryland Aaron, what about you? Um, as far as what? Like just when you the, first started, like, did you feel overwhelmed with the 20? I mean, 20 offers, like it, it seemed doable. No, uh, it was, yeah, it was completely doable. Um, you know, when we first started, we weren't on LG Pass, which makes it unbelievably easy. But, um, you know, we just had a spreadsheet and, you know, you kind of, uh, what's the thing where you get Excel over to Word and, you know, create your document and then uh, print them. You know, it was it was real easy. It probably took 20 offers, probably took about, I don't know, 20 minutes to half an hour. All right. It's not bad. It's yeah. not bad at all. Um, all right. Well, let's go to our tips of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a quote, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Bear Land and Aaron, you've On got the, spot the floor. First. <laughs> on the spot. Okay. Um, mine is an iPhone app. And it's not necessarily for our business per se, but it can be a handy little thing. It's called Vuforia Chalk. Yeah. V Vuforia Chalk. It's two words. V-U-F-O-R-I-A uh, Chalk. And let me see, I can probably put the link in the uh, comments. Um, oh, I see. I don't it. know. Okay. Anyways, what it is, it's this little app that um, uses the new in augmented reality technology. So you and somebody else can communicate, you know, video on something and draw on your screen at the same time. Like uh, Bearland Bryce is, you know, got his driver's license. He's working on his truck that he started driving to school and I might be at the house and he might be at a, at a different building and he wants to show me something and you know, Hey, how does this part go on kind of thing? And he can draw a little picture on the screen or I can point to something. It's kind of just a, and you know, using the AR technology, if you move your phone around, you know, your, your, your drawings or your, you know, what your elements stay where they need to be instead of just floating around. So it's kind of a cool little app. This is really cool. In fact, I'm not going to tell my parents to download it because <laughs> I will be, I will be solving too many of their problems, <laughs> but this is really good. This is really good. It has a lot of use cases. Uh, that's awesome. Euphoria chalk. I just downloaded it. Uh, Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. What's your tip of the week? All right. My tip of the week is kind of a, uh, more than anything, it's a mindset. And it's the mindset that one hour of your day is only 4% of that 24 hour time frame. Ooh, one so you, hour of your day is only 4% of your 24 hour time frame. Yeah. So when you start to think of it that way, if you want to run this business successful, you need to dedicate, you know, 8% of your 24 hour time frame to run your land business. It's only 8%. Wow. Not that much, not that much time. So kind of a, you know, it's 4.1% or something like that. But I was, uh, I was driving today or last week and I saw, um, at the, the gym near my house, you know, it's the new year and everybody's setting new year's resolutions. And, and that was their, their big slogan is one hour is only 4% of your day. Get in here. No excuses. You know, 
work out, get set those new goals for the 2018 year. And I thought, you know what, that makes perfect sense to me. One hour, if you're, if you need more time in this business, you know what you need to do. You need to get up early. You need to fabricate, fabricate that time. And we're only talking about, in, you know, increasing your time by 4%, right? It's, it's not that much. Anybody can do that. So that's kind of my, it's a mindset, right? Go into it with this mindset that you can do it. You can make the time. One hour is 4% of your day. I love it. It reminds me of that Arnold Bennett book that uh, I read, How to Live on 24 Hours a Day. And he talks about, you know, kind of, you know, taking that sort of, you know, what you call it, quote unquote dead time after you, you know, your work life and then you kind of like fritter it away, like really use it productively and be intentional with it instead of just, you know, like back then it would have been, you know, going to like a pub. Like today it'd be like, you know, watching YouTube or Netflix videos, uh, which all the cool kids do, Tate Litchfield. <laughs> no, notice I didn't say watch cable because Tate would be like, Tate cable, what's, what's that? But it's all good. Scott Todd, what's your Mark, tip of the week? I, I can't remember if we've talked about this or not, but it's, um, it was one I, this is a book that I was actually re-listening to over the last weekend, and I thought, here's a great tip. Ready? It is uh, by Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. I love that book. All right. So yeah. too many people I see are like, hey, what's a great book to, to learn how to sell? Uh, Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Uh, go get it. You know, you know speaking of that, um, I can't wait to negotiate at boot camp with you, uh, Scott Todd. Something, we're going to just negotiate something because I'm reading – and I am going to read again, and I'm taking notes. It's good, isn't it? Never split the difference by Chris it's Boss. It's really yeah. good. It's really I guess good. I'm going to have to brush up on my negotiation skills before I see you. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm practicing my, my accusation audit. I'm working on my open-ended questions, my how and what. Uh, I'm really, I'm really going to get this thing nailed down. You're dialing it up, huh? I'm dialing it up. Like if, if after San Antonio... If I don't have an equity piece of your home, something went really wrong. Oh, no, no, that's not happening. <laughs> See? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, you're supposed to say, well, how's, no. how, how does that work? How no, can we even no, do that? No. I, I'm just discounting it right now. Just I don't know. I guess, you know what? I guess, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, Mark, I guess there's a price for everything. See? I guess there's a it, price. It would just be a fun exercise. Or, you know. Everything something. I own is for sale. Just remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be kind of fun to uh, to negotiate, but uh, Aaron, Marilyn, are you are you are you uh, reading Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss? Um, no, it's on my list though. I haven't gotten to it yet. I, I think it's great as far as not just negotiating, but even just sales in general. I mean, what do you think, Scott? It can help with sales. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because every sale is a negotiation, right? Like you know, right. you're. You know, if you're trying to sell your spouse on, uh, I don't know, buying something, well, you're negotiating with them somehow, some way. It's everything's a negotiation. Right. Tate's so good at negotiating, he should just write his own book. So, how I don't, I don't buy anything. <laughs> how, how I buy everything five cents of the dollar when a land geek buys it at 10 cents of the dollar by Tate Litchfield. And it's My just God. like a picture of Tate like dropping the mic. <laughs> you know. Um, all right. Well, Big I got a negotiation guide. Hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my tip of the week is kind of based on Tate's tip of the week, right? So if you're only using 4% of your day to run your land business or, you know, 8% of your day to run your land business or um, as a side hustle, whatever it is, like, you, you know, it's, as soon as your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you have a new better problem, which is, well, what do I do with all this new time? Right. And so there's a site called Nomad List, nomadlist.com. So check this out. And uh, Scott, are you laughing? I'm pulling up right now. It says, find the best place to live, I've seen work, this. and play. So N Nomad List is the biggest database of cities in the world. It analyzes 250,000 plus data points to help you choose where to go. So, like, you know, uh, Rachel Mueller and uh, Sean Rickman. They could just go to nomadlist.com and say, okay, looks like we're going to go to Timisoara, Romania, based on, uh, you know, 
this these data points. Um, and it's kind of cool. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, yeah. I'm wondering like how number 10, honestly, like I'm wondering how number 10 can be like Los Angeles right now. Right. Like, I don't know. I think well, you, you got the to beach. Have... It's fun. It's pretty safe. You got internet. Okay. Okay. But, but look at the price, man. Like it's $2,800 a month versus like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess I have to look at how it's rated. Yeah, but big deal. If you're 10,000 a month passive, that's 28%. Then you got the rest of the time to, to enjoy. I guess I want to go with my own list. What's on your list right now? Where's the, where's the next place? I've got uh, I've got some some places that I actually want to fly to. Like that's on the the list. You know, like I actually want to fly myself there. So you know, it's really right now. It's like around the southeast. Uh, you know, go go hang out around the southeast. There you go. Nice. Anything on here uh, striking your fancy tape? Oh, it's just cool. I mean, you know me, I'm always looking for uh, a new adventure. So it's, it's kind of a, uh, I don't know. It's, it seems really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, Budapest, which I just pronounced correctly, by the way, and the only reason I know how to pronounce it like the, the Pest is because my, uh, the lady that cuts my hair is actually Hungarian. My parents so, just got back from there. They loved it. Yeah. And she's like, she wants to live there. She's like, it's really inexpensive. It's super fun. Great food. The problem is it's cold there. And I'm with Scott. I'm not going anywhere that's cold. You know, it's no thank you. I mean, like I'm Mark, I'm looking like number 45, Palo Alto. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like, I don't know. I, I think you'd have to have like uh well, look, it shows the cost in the red. It says that's, that's the big problem is it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty cool to see, you know, the kind of thing. I mean, look, look, Mark, you and I, wow, this is pretty amazing though. You and I are actually living in number 77 and 78. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah you're in Phoenix. I'm in Tampa. Like, you know, that's kind of cool. Yeah, how come Tampa I mean, beat Phoenix for internet? Because uh, we're cool. I mean, you're, you're. Wait a second. This doesn't make any sense. I've got Look, a higher fun. nomad score. I have but a you're higher beating us on. Yeah, I, I got you. Fun. That's what I'm telling you, man. Like, there's something wrong here. I've got more fun. I mean, I have <laughs> beaches and water and Disney World. Not too far. I got all kinds of stuff. I got fast internet. And what do you have? Like. Everything's in yellow. I, I've got desert. I've this got is, mountains. This Cactuses. Is, ca- After know. further review, this this thing is rigged. Yeah, but you know what, Scott? I've got better food. But, may, but food's not a criteria on here. It should be, though. It's Safety. Fun. I mean, no, no, one, no one that I hang out with is going to Panera Bread for lunch today. Like, they're going to, like, the new hot. I, I didn't go to Panera Bread today. Where'd you go? Okay, let's change topics now. <laughs> oh, I didn't go to Panera that's, Bread, and that's did, why Tampa is number. I did not go to Panera Bread, but I didn't. I, today, I didn't go to a place that I really like. Like my wife wanted to go there, so I was like, okay. No, didn't oh, go today's lunch. All right. Well, I hope everybody's getting value from these roundtable podcasts. I want to remind everybody: please uh, do us a favor, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. We still have spots open for January flight school coming up very soon. And we also have a few spots left at boot camp in San Antonio. So go to thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp to learn more. Scott's going to be there. Tate's going to be there. Bearland Aaron? I think so. San Antonio. Remember the Alamo. It's going to be amazing. Everyone who comes to boot camp tells me the same thing. All the land investing clouds in their heads dissipate. Everything becomes totally clear. In fact, I got an email today. Someone was in flight school and they're like, hey, I, you know, I'm getting all this information. Am I going to feel overwhelmed going to boot camp? I'm like, absolutely not. Come to boot camp in San Antonio. And it's only going to fortify all the information you're learning now and make it even clearer. And uh, so come. So do that. Right, Scott? It's, it's like the one-two punch, Mark. 
It really is the one-two punch. There's nothing like being in the room. There really isn't. Uh, so definitely come. Uh, anything else? Nothing nope. else. All right. Nothing else. List, your, list your properties on landmoto.com. There's a little plug for you, Scott. Yeah. Hey, I, after um, there's been a lot of requests lately to, for me to redo the accounting seminar, accounting for land investors. And I wasn't going to do it, but we're going to do it in January. So there you go. watch for that. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. And are you guys ready? Let's go. One, two, two, two three. Three. Let freedom ring. You got to oh close your gosh. eyes. You got to close your eyes and do it. It's better. It's bad. All right. Thank you, listeners. All right. I'm come on, Scott. Give, give us the goods. Where'd you go? Seriously. It's just us. Where'd I go? Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a restaurant called Jersey Mike's. You went to another. Uh, look, you know, play? you know what though? I, you know what? I love Jersey Mike's. I don't think there's don't anything like wrong with Jersey Mike's. What's I, wrong with Jersey Mike's? I don't know. I, Is I it the processed turkey? Sauce. I don't know. I don't really care for it. There's a, um, there's a Greek restaurant that I've been enjoying. Mark, a Greek restaurant, local Greek restaurant. What are but, you getting? What do you, I mean, look, is it a gyro sandwich <laughs> with French fries? That's not Greek. Okay. No, it's a. You're getting pasticcio. It's a chicken sandwich yeah, on a pita. On, it's a chicken pita. Nothing chicken wrong pita with gyro. Tate, right. yeah, Tate, Tate and I will get. We'll, we'll, we'll take you for some. Real okay. Food. Hey, Mark. Do you know where I went to dinner on Saturday, Sunday night? Where? I went to the Columbia restaurant. You did. That. Drop the mic on you and Tate. There Fine. you go. Okay. I'm like, that's where I went on set. My wife and I went on Saturday night, Sunday night. We were actually down there. I'm like, let's go to the Columbia. And I thought for an instant, like, let me just send these guys a picture. And I'm like, ah, I can't do that to them. I can't do it. So, you, you know, should have done it. I sent, done it. I, yeah, man, let me tell you what I had. We shared a Cuban. Nice. Right. For an appetizer. Uh, yeah. Well, it, we, it came all at the same time. So we shared that. And then we got the uh, shrimp and rice. Um, which is wow. just incredible. And before, before that, of course, they bring you the Cuban bread, which, you know, is always a nice topper. Wow. Man, it was good. That's so good. This time of year, I really struggle, man. There's so much like just dessert, good desserts. And what's your, what's, Aaron, do you have a hard time this time of year? I have a hard time all year long, man. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'll tell you, I'm having a good time. I, and I, I, it's showing. I've gained like 10 pounds. I'm having a great time in life. Just eating my way through various in, cities. I was in Seattle over the weekend and we went to a place called the walrus and the carpenter and had oysters there. It was so good, man. If you like seafood, this place, you guys got to check it out. I'm scared of oysters. Why? Uh, Aaron, do you eat oysters? Yeah. Okay. I yeah, they're pretty I know, good. They're like slimy. They don't look appetizing. No, I know Scott good. won't eat an oyster. That, this guy won't even eat a hummus. <laughs> <laughs> no, Scott, nothing? How do you live in Florida and not eat oysters? Listen, oysters will kill you. They actually put, they actually put notices yeah. on the menu, like don't eat oysters. I'm fine. Kill you. I'm fine, man. You're just gonna die anytime, man. I hope you have a. I hope you have a plan. We're all, we're all gonna die anytime, right? Was it? Was, Not hey, was it cold? Huh? Were you cold yeah. in Seattle? It's cold. No, it was freezing. It was so cold. It was like forty degrees. It was oh crazy. my gosh, dude! It's like, I think it's about eighteen here right now, and I'm I'm looking out the door at eighteen inches of snow and and still coming. So you guys all why live in why? great places? Why? 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 Yeah, why? Why? Because my kids are fish, finishing up school. I can't just yank them out and drag them to a new part of the country in their senior years. You who know, says, man? Who 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 says? Oh, I'm not gonna do it. To That's them. listen. That is a good dad. Listen, Aaron. Aaron. Um, yeah, there's I'm no a good dad. on your feet, man. There's no. You're not tied down to the ground. All right. Nothing saying that they can't finish and catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you guys somewhere warm. Call me when you're done. It was so cold. The baby hated it. She was like, no, nope, I'm not doing this cold weather thing anymore. So, You, you yeah. know, it's crazy. My kids actually want to go to college in a cold 
place. I'm like, go. Because then you'll come back and you want to live close to home. Yeah, they'll be back in four years. That's what yeah, I did. My absolutely. parents, my freshman year, my parents were like, oh, if you go to college, you know, and do get good grades, we'll get you a ski pass. I was like, all right, cool. They got me a ski pass. I signed up for the snowboard class uh, through the university. And uh, on like the second day I was up there, I thought about dropping the class. I hated every single minute of it. It was snowing all the time, too much powder, way too cold, couldn't see, not dressed properly. Nope. That was all I needed. That was my, you know, my taste of the, uh, the cold winters that can be. It, it's funny because you've got that thick Canadian blood too. Not I can tell Tate's not a yeah. skier because he said too much powder. Yeah. You can never have too much powder. It was too it's, much, man. I yeah. couldn't even go anywhere. That's like hearing you can't I love say you powder. too much. You can't say powder Miami, man. That means something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same color. Same color. All right, guys. All right. This, is, this is great. Fairland Aaron, thanks again for jumping on. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks, guys.